Hi, I'm Evelyn Hershey. Welcome to the American Labor Museum. It's October 10th, and for our Saturday labor art class today, we're going to be making a bookmark inspired by the story of Patterson, the Silk City. So what I'd like you to do at home is to find a stiffer piece of paper. Um, I have part of a folder uh, from my office, but if you have a box, a shoe box, is ideal. Um, you'll want something that's a little bit stiffer to keep a place in your book. And then once you have that, um, I have not done so, but I'm going to take a ruler and mark off a two and a half uh, inch width from top to bottom of my folder for my bookmark. And then I'll cut it out and I'll be ready to go with a pencil and some markers or crayons. Uh, to give us some ideas of what we can include on our bookmark, um, we're going to look at some photographs about Patterson, the Silk City. And as you might guess, Patterson is nicknamed that because it was a producer of silk. High-grade silk fabric was woven in the city. In fact, half of the silk that was purchased in the United States around 1910 came from the city of Patterson. Thousands of workers, including Pietro Bado, who's above my shoulder on the left, worked in those mills. He was a weaver. He was an immigrant from Italy, and most of the silk mill workers were likewise immigrants from silk centers in Europe. Macclesfield, England, Bielostok, Poland, Krefeld, Germany. They were from many European countries and they brought their skills with them. Skilled and unskilled workers were in the mills. So what was involved in making this high grade silk? Here are some examples of beautiful ribbons that were made in the city of Patterson. Look at the colors and the pattern, really beautiful. In addition to ribbons, broadcloth was made for use in making clothing, upholstering chairs, um, creating curtains, even making parachutes. Silk is very strong in addition to being beautiful. It's also warm. Silk is a natural fiber. It comes from the cocoon of silk worms. All the raw silk in the Patterson Mills was imported. It was purchased and brought from the Far East and from Italy. And then the raw silk was dyed. Color was put into it in dye shops where you see these workers. It was very dangerous in a dye shop because the dye vats, the square bathtub-like uh, objects that you see in the photos, were filled with boiling water and acids. And the dyers were required to taste the chemical combination to make sure that it was correct. So hazardous for one's health to work in a dye shop. But if one needed work, it was easy to get a job here. This is unskilled easy to stand at a box and dip the skeins inside. No skill required. And you could go home after a 55 hour work week with $7 or $8 in your pocket for that kind of a work, kind of low. After color was put in the silk, the silk were placed on bobbins. Do you have a sewing machine at home? Have you seen one? I bet the bobbins are not as large as the ones I have in my hand. These are bigger bobbins for factory work. They were filled largely by children. Yes, kids went to work. They were not in school. Eight, nine-year-olds in this house, 11, 13, no more school, but off to work in order to earn extra income for the family. Families didn't have enough money when just mom and dad worked for basic things like food, and shoes and coal for stoves to keep you warm in the winter. Kids had to go to work. They were breadwinners for their family. Well, once the silk was woven, then it was taken to the room where it was placed on looms. And the warpers seen here put the threads on the machine so the weavers could do their work. And you could see the bobbins, all the bobbins here that have all been filled the threads run across to the large wheels that the warpers are working on. Almost looks like a spider web. The threads were very fine. Working with silk 
requires a lot of skill with one's hands. Wasn't easy work to do. Once the looms were prepared, the weavers stepped up to them and started them running. This is a single loom. Notice how large it is compared to the height of the weaver, the size of the weaver. Each weaver was required to operate two looms. At the end of a 55 hour work week, a weaver would go home with $15 if you were Pietro Bado in your pocket. If you were a girl doing the same job, and many women did that job, you went home with less money. How come you did the same work, same level of skill, but simply because you were female, you got paid less. At that time, everyone thought, well, maybe you have a dad to help you or a husband, somebody else, a man. But the women did the same work and got paid less. Above her hands, you can see cardboard cards. Gee, we could use one as a bookmark. They're all laced together and they have different patterns of holes in them. These are called jacquard cards. I have some here that I'll show you. You can see how they're laced together and they are actually numbered. Can you see that? They have numbers on them. Some patterns or some sets of jacquard cards had hundreds of these cards laced and stitched together. And each one has a different pattern of holes. What this is, is instructions for a loom on how to weave silk with patterns, colors, flowers, designs. Each card represents one pass of a thread through the warp threads that the warpers put on the loom. It was also a job in the mill to lace all of these cards together in the right order. And that was often done by teenage boys who worked also at the mill. Here's one boy working on a lacing machine. He has a tie on. You could see the jacquard cards being laced and he is looking at a drawing of silk. I have some painter's samples. In the factories, there were artists who painted designs for silk patterns. That would be a fun job to me. These are patterns for necktie silk. If you have a necktie or someone in your family does, take a close look at all the threads and how the design is not printed on the fabric, but woven into the fabric. This design isn't finished yet. This design has attached to it the final silk that was made from it. Painting, this is all painted. This is a piece of fabric. See how the design is translated into cloth? On the back of the designs, the artist wrote instructions. Might be hard to read these. These are actually in German. This artist was a German immigrant. And what the artist is telling us is that, and the other factory workers, how many threads are needed for this design? How many warp threads? They counted very small threads uh, in order to figure out the designs. Pietro Baro, above my shoulder, stood at the looms and he looked at this piece of equipment all day, 10 hours a day, five hours on Saturday. This is called a shuttle. It moves very quickly through the warp threads carrying the weft thread. There's thread here. If you've ever done a weaving project, you know when you set up the looms, your warp threads uh, are on the loom, and then you take a, a thread probably with your hand, if you use a hand loom, and move the thread under, over, under, over all the warp threads. That's what this shuttle does. Shoots back and forth in a mechanical uh, machine, in a mechanical loom. These could travel up to 25 miles an hour. So if they got off track, often they would fly off the machine and could injure a worker. It's sharp metal on the end and fairly heavy piece of equipment. 
Weavers had to be very careful when they operated their machines, and they were very proud of the work that they did. Making this beautiful silk that went to showrooms in New York City and was worn by everyone around the country and had an important purpose in keeping people warm in the winter and helping them as parachutes when they needed to sail down from an airplane later on. So this story, Patterson's Silk Story, Patterson's Silk Mill History is really important still today. Patterson still has old factory buildings, many of them have been reused, and homes of silk mill owners. You will see the story of Patterson Silk as you visit Patterson today and the Botto House and many homes of working people still exist in the area. Pietro and Maria Botto's home is open to you. It's a museum and you are welcome to come and visit with your families so that you can be inspired further to make other art projects. But for today, I hope these pictures and artifacts will give you some ideas of what you can draw on your bookmark. Maybe a silk mill worker, maybe an example of a silk design, maybe part of a factory, a shuttle, a bobbin would look wonderful on your bookmark and the words Patterson, the Silk City. So thank you for tuning in. I look forward to seeing you next Saturday for our next Saturday Labor Art Class project. And you are welcome to bring your families and tour the museum, bring a mask, and we are open Wednesday through Saturday from 1 to 4 p.m. So happy art making and see you soon.